Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, the first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back. Um, this is the first uh, of the challenges, challenge one. Um, but uh, today we're going to take a look at using the color sensor. You don't see a color sensor in this one. You don't see any sensors. So we're actually going to go to the FTC SIM uh, option and scrolling down here you can see I have a bunch of different ones if you haven't seen this before they it's been changed um, to categorize them a little bit so we're gonna look at FTC sensor now it gives you a bunch of them I'm gonna choose to do the first one because it's the easiest one to demonstrate um, and as you're gonna see I have already gotten it done so again what, what's going to happen here is that when the robot starts to go um, as soon as it starts to go, this little black square that's here is actually going to change to either red or blue. And depending on whether it's red or blue, a red or blue gate is going to come down. And the idea is then you turn and go towards the, the flag when that gate has come down. So I've actually done it. So you can see it's a little, little long here. So I'm going to demonstrate first. Now, um, what I want to point out is other than the fact that uh, I feel really good about having done that myself, <clears throat> is that I've put in some telemetry to provide me with some information. So I wanted to see, um, as I was testing this and trying this, what was the hue value for the color. So it's giving me a hue value and a saturation value for the color of whatever it's over top. So the sensor is on the bottom of the robot and it's pointing directly to the floor. In fact, it's probably pretty close to the floor so that it can get a really good reading. And you can see on the tiles, it's giving you about a hue of zero and a saturation of, hue of zero. So I want to do that because I want to make sure that I knew what was going on. But when I am doing this, just to uh, remind you, I do have uh, an opportunity to deal with the color sensor. So I have these um, uh, blocks that will provide me with a value coming from those sensors. And if I go to the utilities under color, I will see that I have this one here, which allows me to create a variable, which I've called sensed color. And it's going to take whatever the sensed color is, that value, um, the hue, the saturation, and the value. There are, there are three things that it will take from these uh, colors when it gets over top of something. So I'm going to move that out of the way. But because it's over top of the tiles, it's going to take those values there and it's going to show those values up here in telemetry. And um, when it does the blue one, it does the same thing. So you could see that it had some values along the way that were not zero and zero. Okay. So I could tell it to tell me, oh, this is blue or this is red, but I, I didn't feel the need to do that. So essentially it's taking the sense color and it's going to add in the telemetry. I put in a a prompt to say, oh, this is for the hue, what that value is. And based on those values that I'm getting, whether it's red or blue, um, I'm going to do something. So I'm using a decision structure, an if statement. So if you haven't seen that before, that's what this if is. In fact, I've used two to make it a little bit easier. So the first one, it says, look, when you see if the, see if the hue, the value that you're over top of, is greater than 220. So I know from running this with the telemetry that when it's blue, it provides a value of about 220. So as long as it's, I think it's about 240, but as long as it's greater than 220, because technically on the color wheel, it would be a range of color. It wouldn't just be 220, it wouldn't be just be 240. It would be between say 220 and 270, for example, if I have that correct. And then based on that, I want it to turn right and move towards the flag, which it did. So then again, I'm doing the same things that we've done in other videos. Um, however, uh, if it's, uh, I want to do it if it's red as well. So let's let's take a hope, see if it turns red. No, I'll try it again. There we go. And I don't know if you could see it when it did it, but the hue was zero and the saturation was like a 0.988, something like that. Well, the hue actually is not zero. If you looked it up, you'd see that it's actually in a range. and the value that this one produced was actually 360, which on a 360 degree 
color wheel is 0 and 360 are the same thing. So that's what it was. But in order to do it, because the tiles, as you can see, are also giving a hue value of 0, because that's what it stopped right now, I had to add in something else to my if. It's not just an if by itself with a single condition. It's got a multiple multiple conditions, and it's joined by the and. So it says, look, if the color, if the hue is 0, which I know it is because I've tested it, and that the saturation is greater than 0.5, and we know it's 0.988, whatever, as it went to, then we're going to do whatever the next steps are. Okay, so that's that's the way it's working. If I didn't have that, it wouldn't do it. it if, in fact, it would give me the value, it would give me a zero value all the way up to, and including if this was red, even if this was blue, it's giving me those values between the start and the blue. So that could be problematic. So again, then I'm going to make it turn right. And well, I guess I should have changed that one to turn left since it did actually go left. So I'll do that right now. So I'll turn left and move to the flag. This one's going to turn right and move to the flag. That gives you some idea of what you have to do. So the reason why this is great is because you don't know what you're going to do when you um, start. So it's going to randomly pick between red and blue. And then when you get over that, you're going to react uh, based on what has been programmed. So that's why it's so good. So um, if you've understood that and you can take some time to take a look and go through it, then you should be able to try one of the other ones because there are a whole bunch. There are a whole bunch that have uh, things with color sensors in them and they get more and more complicated as you go along. And then eventually there's distance sensors as well. And that's another topic for another video is the distance center to try to figure out where you are on, on the field. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you haven't signed up for um, your free account at uh, to do this FT, FTC uh, SIM, if you go up here, you'll obviously see where it says pixelpad.io. If you go to pixelpad.io, you can create your own free account and you can do this as well. And one of these days, hopefully you'll have a robot, similar to the ones that we saw on screen, that you can do that with as well. So again, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Stay safe. If you do have any questions, you can email me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org.